Nature has been taking care of the human being since uh, the beginning of this planet. Yeah, everything is interconnected. The worrying thing about it is that as humans, we actually don't really understand the level of interconnectedness between species. Rewilding is about reinstating the ecological status that historically occurred before. But then if you bring wildlife, you bring animals, then you are uh, boosting the area. You have to physically bring animals back to rehabilitate and rewild the area. So the Peace Parks Foundation uh, entered into a co-management agreement with the government of Mozambique. I mean, the whole process of translocation from Gorongosa to Zinaf and Maputo Special Reserve, for example, it wouldn't happen if there wasn't a broad understanding between the different authorities in Mozambique. Well, Gorongosa is a fantastic example of, of what happens if it just gives nature a chance to recover. To be with now 45,000 water bags in the park from 100, this is a success. Not only success on Gorongosa, but success in the country level. Mozambique uh, suffered uh, a lot in terms of uh, wildlife resources, uh, the animal that they lost uh, during a uh, civil war. If you think about it, we're attempting to move 7,500 animals over the next three to five years. So it's a massive operation in all senses. Remember, we can only transport maybe 20 to 30 animals at a time. Translocation of such a large number of animals requires a specialized capture operation. So the idea is to, to capture, in this instance, water buck. You try and keep the family unit. So animals are being pushed into a boma by means of a helicopter. And onto a truck and then immediately transport them. The team is very experienced in what they do. They understand exactly how to treat the animals. Journey from Gorongosa National Park to Zinave National Park, the maximum is 15 hours. It's all geared towards minimizing injuries, minimizing mortalities, and overall minimizing stress to those animals. Zinave is a, is a national park, over 400,000 uh, hectares. It's a beautiful place. It is absolutely magnificent. Uh, the landscape of Zanov is typically a lot of um, acacias, knob thorns predominantly, and these wonderful uh, baobab trees, ancient trees, three, four thousand year old trees even. Zanov at the moment is, you will see the vegetation is quite thick. That's because they haven't been grazed for many years. And, and the, the reason for that is that there simply hasn't been any animals. There's no grazers, there's no browsers. So the bushes become thicker and thicker, and it's actually not natural. We've created what we call a sanctuary, just a small reserve within a reserve in which we can concentrate our protection effort. So the animals will be released into the sanctuary and they'll be kept there for the next three to five years and after that gradually be released into the wider national park as and when the security has been improved in the park itself. We are very lucky to see the beginning of journey because uh, Zinav is going to shine in the next 10 years and we will be able to supply uh, wildlife to other areas. Simply by living in harmony with nature, not destroying it, utilizing it sustainably, nature will behave very well. Well, my dream would be that we see a park that that is teeming with wildlife, that supports um, community development. I think I'm really lucky to be here and be part of that process and proud. Uh, conserving uh, nature for the benefit of people. I feel proud that we have started.
10 years down the line, uh, the children from uh, Zinav, they will find in Zinav the source of employment, the source of living, and they will be proud of protecting this nature. People are connected, you know, also whatever Zinav is doing for its own, it's actually ultimately going to benefit the whole world.